This is the largest arch. It's a six inch interior sized arch. So there are three pieces to this arch and the way you'll identify them is I have labeled these. So the inside right here, you'll notice that I have a 6A. So let's see if I can get that close up here. You see that's labeled as 6A. And the piece that it goes against is also labeled with a 6A. So you put 6A against 6A and you glue those two together. And this other piece right here is labeled 6B. So 6 for a 6 inch arch. And then the other side is 6, 6B. So you'll put the smooth side against the smooth side. One other thing that's helpful is I have kind of an angle made of Legos. Uh, something like this really helps you get it straight. Now if you start gluing it together, it's possible that this right here can kind of be pushed down to where the angle is really not straight. See how that's closing up? One thing you can do is to take uh, the little half inch square block, don't glue it, but just set it there. And when you have put this glue together, uh, glue it together like that and then just um, let it sit there and then work onto the next one and glue all your arches. The next arches we're going to glue together are the three inch arches. They measure three inches from inside to inside once you have a complete arch. And these are once again made of three pieces here. And this is also labeled so if you look at the way it's labeled here on the inside you'll notice that uh, if I can get it into the camera it is labeled 3A and 3A. Those two will go together smooth against smooth uh, to form this part of the arch. The next one in here is labeled 3B. So if you look at it, you'll notice it's labeled 3B and 3B. Smooth goes against smooth and it will go together that way. Now on the mold you're going to notice a couple of small pieces that you're probably wondering what they're for. We've got kind of a little uh, a rounded piece here and we've got another kind of rounded piece here. What I have here is the three inch arch and in combination with this little one inch square flat wall piece that you see here, uh, what you do is you simply take this one here, you just kind of put all of the brick layers going the same way. This one will fit here this one will fit here, and this one will fit here. Here's an example of the three inch arch with the uh, recessed blocks filled in behind it. Uh, if you look at the back of it, I put them all the way against the back, so it still makes a nice design on the back. Uh, you don't have to recess it back all the way. You can instead just take this and move it halfway between right in the middle so that the front side would recess a slightly less and you'd get a recess on the back as well. I wanted to show a couple of other ideas that the bridge pieces could be used for. Here you see we've got the regular bridge. If you only did half of the bridge, in this case, uh, let's say we've got the bridge here and then the other side is just the walkway, uh, I could picture that as a uh, walkway between two different towers. If you had the main entrance to a castle and you had the uh, uh, two main towers on each side, this could be where the uh, main gate of the castle would be. And on the back side of the main gate of the castle is where the guards could kind of look down. Uh, that's one option you could do. Another option you can do is just to do the bridge walkway by itself. So this is just the bridge walkway by itself. And maybe you might think of Gandalf in the uh, uh, bridge at uh, Casa Doom. If you just have... Uh, just the edges right there and you have uh, miniatures that can go over it. Now this this walkway could only be too wide which would be narrower and probably a little scarier but that kind of shows you what it would look like. Now let's say you want to use the floor of the bridge as a ramp in your dungeon. Uh, you're going to find that when you glue the two together when you alternate them uh, it's kind of uneven on the end. We're going to have to even that out. In other words if I wanted one end to go down on the dungeon floor and I wanted the other end to kind of uh, lead up onto a, onto a wall to a new section of the dungeon this end doesn't work but it's actually pretty easy to fix what you'll have to do is you'll have to nip a piece off of this and kind of throw it over into there to nip it off you're going to need something like tile nippers uh, these aren't really super expensive and you're going to use them on a lot of projects so they're probably a good investment if you take the distance from here and here and find the center, let's say you just draw a line with a pencil like right here, that's where you want to nip this thing right here. You're going to nip it there and you're going to throw that over there. So let's do that. Let's see. Nippers actually do a really good job of cutting things fairly straight. Now it may, uh, it may break the piece, but uh, let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. 
See how nice that piece came out? It broke off of here, that's it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin it around and I'm gonna fit it in there. Now once you have this little narrow half bridge right here, if you put it onto uh, floor tiles there, it's possible to set it up, uh, it would butt right up against the wall right here. So you could use it as a little bridge or a little span in the dungeon to go up to the next higher level possibly.